Okay, it's June 24th, middle of the market session, uh, and it's happened. We've finally seen our first downgrade for the uh, Government of Canada. I called this out a couple of uh, months ago. I said that a combination of uh, continued deficits by this current Liberal government, combined with the economic outfall of COVID-19, is probably going to result in a downgrade of our credit rating, our coveted AAA credit rating, and it's happened today. So the big news that's hit the ticker today is that Fitch, which is the uh, three of the, the, the smallest of the three credit rating agencies in the United States, has downgraded Canada to a AA plus credit rating with a stable outlook going forward. Now keep in mind, Fitch is only one of four credit rating agencies in North America. The other three still have a AAA credit rating for the Government of Canada. Uh, DBRS Morningstar, which is the Canadian-based or recently acquired, but Canadian, previously a Canadian-based credit, uh, credit rating agency had affirmed their credit rating back in March. That may be reviewed, especially after Fitch has done their downgrade. S&P and Moody's still have a AAA credit rating. Fitch uh, had upgraded Canada in 2004, back when a Liberal government was last in power under the Prime Minister Paul Martin. Uh, but now they've, under the current Liberal government, downgraded us. What does this mean for Canada and for you as an individual, taxpayer or consumer? Well, simply put, the lower your credit rating, the higher cost of your borrowing. Now, of course, interest rates are at rock bottom levels across the world, uh, but when bond investors are looking to invest their funds, uh, they are looking for a variety of things in deciding how much of a return they should earn. And of course, if you have a AAA credit rating, you can garner a lower cost of borrowing. So this is going to drive up our borrowing costs here in Canada. And considering our debt levels have been skyrocketing under this current government, this does not bode well for our financial situation and our financial outlook. So let's dive into some of the Fitch's details of their rate latest uh, outlook. First of all, they referenced that Canada's consolidated gross government uh, debt ratio as a percentage of GDP for 2020 has now been uh, projected to be 115%. Compare that to 2019 when it was only 88% of GDP. Still a very high number, but now this is ab above 100%. Fitch expects this ratio to stabilize going from 2022 to 2024 at 120%. So you can see why they've downgraded our credit rating because not just what's happening here in 2020, but what their outlook looks like all the way out to four years from now. Canada's general uh, government deficit is expected to widen to 16% of GDP in 2020. You can compare that to the average over the last five years, which has generally been a surplus. Uh, this is another reason why I could see that Fitch and likely other credit rating agencies will be downgrading our credit rating. The t pandemic lockdown measures and the depressed oil demand globally has caused a, a severe recession here in Canada where the economy is now expected to contract by about 7% of GDP into 2020. A reminder that we talked about a couple of months ago was when Fitch came out and announced that they were placing the Canadian banks on a ne negative outlook. Now a reminder that a, there's a trend setting that the credit rating agencies use to indicate where they expect to be going with the actual ultimate credit rating. So the first thing they typically do is before they do a downgrade or an upgrade, they simply send, switch the trend from maybe stable to uh, neutral or neutral to negative. And so we saw the Canadian banks get a negative outlook back in April. They expect these large Canadian banks for the full year 2020 to see their profits being meaning, meaningfully uh, decline versus what they uh, would have been earning uh, before COVID-19. Another key metric here that a lot of people I think are missing is the uh, debt that Canadians themselves are carrying. Look, we've seen since 2016 rising debt levels as a percentage of people's income. In fact, today, Canadians on average have 175% of their debt to disposable income, which is an astonishing number considering that in 2007, the year before the financial crisis, when American consumers were at their highest levels of debt per income, were only at 130%. Canadians are at 175. Now there is no sign on the horizon of rising interest rates, but if you wanna talk about a risk on the horizon, it's any little smidge of an increase in interest rates are gonna have a serious impact on the Canadian households. In closing, Fitch is the first, but probably not the last of the credit rating agencies to initiate this downgrade. In fact, typically what happens is you get it as initiated by one credit rating agency and many others tend to follow right afterwards. So I would not be surprised at all in the coming weeks or months if we see S&P, 
Moody's and even DBRS, who just affirmed their credit rating um, in March, come back out and reaffirm that rating and, and drop that down to something below the AAA, the coveted AAA level. Further to that, we have to also expect that provinces are likely going to also see a downgrade. As an example, the province of BC today still has a AAA credit rating by Fitch. Now, how is it possible that the province of BC, which is also going to go through a massive deficit in 2020, has a higher credit rating than the government of Canada, who can actually print the money? So the message here, folks, is if you are an investor and you are concerned about your investment portfolio, I've repeated this over again, I'm going to say it again, you've got to have a plan. You may not be a fixed income investor. You may not be someone who's investing in Canada, government of Canada bonds. Most people don't. But this reflects what the economy is going towards as far as the credit rating agencies are concerned. I believe we've got some really rocky roads ahead of us here. I think there's going to be some very down days like we're seeing in the market today. And you've got to have a plan to make sure you're going to be able to stomach the volatility that we're going to see in the equity markets and the fixed income markets in coming months and quarters. If you'd like help from our team, give us a call. We'd be happy to speak with you. We'll have an update again sooner. Thanks very much.